model, not without reservations, but a model for the job guarantee programs that are being floated. And of course, job guarantee programs have an, uh, a relationship, a very close relationship to MMT, because we all know that in fact, uh, even within the framework of a capitalist economy, governments could, should they choose, generate a near fully employed uh, economy. I'm not precisely sure what full employment means, so I'll just say nearly full employed. Anybody who wants a job can get a job, right? Uh, and there's any number of papers that have circulated, any number of presentations, discussions, etc., with the title something like, we need a new WPA. Right? Everybody's familiar with that. Well, I'm going to put forward some, uh, let's say, reservations about the WPA, uh, several of which are not discussed in the JG or MMT literature, right? Because I don't think we, I don't think we want a new WPA, and you'll know why when I go through the argument. Now, uh, a good deal of my criticisms uh, are somewhat related to uh, Veblen's concept of the vested interests, uh, but also we have to talk a little bit about Keynes, and I'll bring in Hyman Minsky uh, at, at a particular point. Now, the first thing I want to do is discuss very quickly the economic leadings of some of the major figures in the Roosevelt administration, including Roosevelt himself. If you look at, and uh, Professor Sturgeon will appreciate this, uh, Rexford Tugwell, who was the institutionalist in the admin, uh, Roosevelt administration, uh, individuals such as Carter Glass of Glass-Steagall, the Banking Act of 1933, uh, and so on. What you will find is that, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> the terrifying realization that I'm the asshole. What, <laughs> oh. what, what you will find is that the leading figures of the New Deal administration were Balanced budget, sound money, men, as they called themselves, okay? Uh, Roosevelt came into office on a balanced budget program uh, in his first period. He slashed government spending, including military spending, interestingly enough. And we know that in 1937, when the economy looked as if it might be recovering, he reverted to his balanced budget mantra Again, spending was slashed, including spending on the WPA, and the result was the 1938 reversal, right, uh, back into a depression. Uh, Roosevelt, Tugwell, others were also uh, averse to large-scale government uh, projects, work projects. Uh, they saw these projects such as the WPA, they saw these projects as actually uh, antagonistic to the economic order and to the liberal ideology that dominated uh, in the 1930. That is, you didn't want government activity to be associated with anything that was remotely of a socialist nature and put socialist in quotation marks or for that matter because you had criticisms from both the left and the right or of a fascist nature because if you look at the Italian program starting in the 1920s you say wait a minute that's like the WPA in certain respects right now I don't want to stretch stretch that too far but in any case they uh, in the administration basically there was actually little support for programs like the WPA. The WPA, well, I'll talk about Im the emergency nature of the WPA in a bit, okay? Now, I'm not hostile to the WPA, right? Uh, I could make a presentation on all the great things that the WPA accomplished, but that's not my objective. I wanna speak to issues that I think 
JG, job guarantee program adherence should pay attention to, right? Based upon the WPA program, okay? Now, WPA accomplished a great deal. Infrastructure, right? Buildings of all sorts, lots of post offices. They love post offices and you'll know why in a second, right? Mm -hmm. Federal theater project. Federal Arts Project, Federal Music Project, Federal Writers Project. It wasn't just building post offices and schools and football stadiums, right? Now, th those cultural projects, educational projects, uh, adult literacy programs and things of that sort, I would argue in the long run were actually, if not more more important than the infrastructure, the construction of buildings and what have you, they were at least as important. And if you look at the Federal Theater Project in particular under Hall Hallie Flanagan, that was the most radical aspect of the Works Project uh, Progress Administration, the WPA. That's where you saw challenges to capitalism put forward in the theater, and that's where you saw, and I'm coming back to this, the only anti-racist program within the New Deal administration, if you leave Eleanor Roosevelt aside, because she was not a racist, right? Uh, but she wasn't an organizer of the WPA, okay? I remind you that Keynes, right, even while he was participating in the fight against the uh, uh, German military machine in World War II, he agreed to chair the Council for the Encouragement of Music and the Arts, which was organized in 1940, right, in England. Uh, he was very keen on uh, the arts, and he saw that as a, an integral, important aspect of the modern economic and social order. Okay, now, prior to the WPA, the Roosevelt administration organized the Civil Works Administration, the CWA, right? Organized in November 1933 under the directorship of Harry Hopkins, ended in uh, April of 1934, right? But essentially, ended or began to end in February 1934. Two active months of existence, that's all, right? That's all, right? Now, this is the first time that the government served as what Keynes labeled the entrepreneurs in chief, right? Where the government took an active role in organizing aspects of the economy. That's Keynes, references entrepreneurs is actually Hubert Henderson's terms but forget that a very successful program in the first month it employed two million unemployed uh, at its peak in mid-January 1934 four million had been put on the federal payroll uh, in its short existence 250,000 miles of roads were built or improved 12 million feet of sewer line laid that's very important given the United States of the day. School buildings constructed, renovated, playgrounds, hospitals, etc. 50,000 teachers were hired to uh, teach adult education classes. The list is long and it's very impressive. Two months of active existence. Secondly, wages were paid at prevailing rates with a minimum wage specified. Right? Wages vary based upon skills and region, etc. Black and white workers were paid the same wage. Okay, keep, bear that in mind, right? Uh, let's go. Uh, administrators of the CWA established a catalog of skills and attempted to match skills with the jobs at hand, right? Now, the question is, the CWA was extremely um, uh, impressive, actually, given two months of existence and the first such project that the government undertook. Why was it canceled very quickly. Why was it canceled? Well, the first problem with the CWA was that it was an emergency program. Lots of, most of the New Deal programs were emergency, right? 
Let me quote the National Resources Planning Board, which we could talk about at length if we chose, but we don't. National Resources Planning Board. The emergency nature of the New Deal programs prove problematic in stabilizing employment. A series of emergency programs of public works construction may be self-defeating in achieving the aim of employment stabilization. Throughout the entire period discussed, there was no definitely continuing policy to guide the planners and administrators of federal, state, local government. Each program was set up as if it were the last. Now, if you go to Keynes, Pavlina, oh, she's doing something else. Uh, Pavlina Chern Cherna, there, oh, oh, you're here. I thought you were, oh, okay. Pavlina has a paper of uh, 2012 or whatever uh, where she uh, brings in Keynes's on-the-spot uh, employment uh, program. Uh, this is very similar to Hyman Minsky, uh, taking workers as they are, a continuing program, right? Not an emergency program, not a temporary. Now, of course, JG adherents want a continuing program. But it's very important that that be built into the economy as whole. Forget about pump priming, the neoclassical version of Keynes or anything of that sort. Uh, so, so anyway, there's a, there's a whole lot of things one could say about the CDA. Why was it canceled so quickly? Roosevelt program, Roosevelt administration never had any intent to implement programs that would conflict with, or at least so they, as they saw it, the capitalist economy, basically, or capitalist interest, right, business interest. Get the economy moving and then stand back. Get out of the way. That was the, uh, that was the objective. Roosevelt to Hopkins on the CWA. We must be careful it does not become a habit with this country, government employment. We must not take the position that we are going to have permanent depression in this country and it is very important that we have somebody to say quite forcefully that uh, quite forcefully to these people, right? So, anyway, uh, objections to the CWA. This is interesting. You would you might expect the business community to have objections to the CWA because they were hiring unemployed workers. The fear was that this would drive up wages for all workers. Right? Your pool of the reserve army is diminishing. Maybe wages are going to rise, cost of production going to rise. That's understandable. The AFL, which was the leading labor organization at the time, uh, right, also objected because they thought that the program was going to drive wages down. Right? Now, this raises a question that I have never thought about until about three months ago, two months ago. Okay? Why aren't labor unions pushing for a job guarantee program? Why haven't they in the past? You know, I, I don't have an answer. It's not a rhetorical question or anything. But I think it should be addressed. What is the issue with labor unions? OK, now, how much time do I have? Good. OK, now go to the WPA finally, OK? Uh, major shortcomings, right? First of all, limited in scope, emergency, et cetera, emergency measure, right? Harry Hopkins, I quote, the director uh, of the WPA, policy from the first was not to compete with private business. Hence, we could neither work on private property, set up a rival merchandising system, nor form a work outlet through manufacturing. Even though manufacturing had contributed to relief rules, hundreds of thousands of workers accustomed to operating machines and to doing nothing else for a living. Okay? So, you don't want to be in competition with the private sector, right? So, you got to find stuff that is non competitive, right? So, what do you do? Well, you build buildings, you construct roads. You construct hospitals, you set up medical programs, you set up the federal theater project, you set up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Fine, well and good. Uh, of the 3,000 structures that were built under WP auspices, 1,400 were post offices. <laughs> Ask why, right? And the bulk of the remainder were school buildings. It's perfectly reasonable that school buildings, right? 
Uh, but ask why post offices? Well, non-competitive, right? The post office is a government uh, 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 program, right? So you need uh, buildings in which mails can be deposited and moved along, right? Um, market wages. The program WPA did pro, uh, pay market wages, but in the South, market wages for blacks and whites, in particular in the South, were significantly different. In other words, the wage policy of the WPA maintained the racist uh, relationships within the labor market, right? It goes beyond that. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the Agricultural Adjustment Act uh, of 1933. The Agricultural Adjustment Act, which uh, Professor Sturgeon knows a lot about, actually, because he's a farmer. Uh, the AAA, right? In the South at the time, South was segregated. I, maybe, I don't know how many people are familiar with U.S. history. It was segregated by law. Right? By law. This is the Jim Crow system. This is apartheid. Right? Okay. Uh, the large farmers in the South depended upon mainly tenant farming and sharecropping. And the bulk of the sharecroppers, in particular, were black. Okay? Now, did the AAA touch the segregationist agricultural system in the South? And the answer is no. Tenant farmers, sharecroppers, and uh, farm labor in general were excluded from the Agricultural Adjustment Act and the Fair, La uh, Fair Wage, Fair Labor Standards Act of 1937 down the road. There was not one civil rights program contained within the New Deal. In other words, here's a problem, right? Uh, I'll make it a very general uh, issue. Uh, JG programs have to be mindful that any such program is going to have to be implemented within the framework of the existing social order, right? The social order in the United States is still of a racist nature. It may not be as extreme as that of the 1930s, but it's still racist. And, of course, over the last couple of years, that has become increasingly prominent again. Racism or an anti-racist program has to be included in the jobs guarantee program, right? Not just anti-racist, gender issues, all environmental issues. I, I think that the JG uh, adherents, of course, are aware of the environmental issues. I don't hear much about racism. I don't hear much about gender issues. But if you're going to do something uh, uh, that's more substantial than just providing jobs, those issues have to be included. Uh, I could talk about the Banking Act and go back to the issue of racism again, but I'm not going to do it. Um, job classification. In the CWA, you tried to match skills to the job. In the WPA, it was willy-nilly, right? And it, this conforms to Minsky taking workers as they are, right? Now, what was necessary are, were much more extensive training programs in addition to obviously learning on the job. You know, you can learn new skills, but training programs. Now, the JG programs that I've read about always include training programs, and I think that that's, that's absolutely necessary and should be emphasized. Um, use value, exchange value. Uh, okay, am I done? One more, one more point. They, the WPA could not engage in activities that uh, were designed to produce what uh, are called commodities. Use value stuff, right, for exchange. Exchange was ruled out. They could only produce use values, stuff, right, post offices, school buildings. Football stadiums, we're still suffering from the University of Arkansas football stadium. That's sort of an inside joke uh, of a sort. Uh, but in any case, use values, right? Now, uh, I, got, I, gotta, I gotta read a quote, sorry, right. Harry Hopkins, WPA projects were those that are socially useful, which are important to the nation, 
which are outside the ordinary scope of our economic system, I would not have us compete by public works with private industry. Socially useful, important, but non-competitive. What the WPA and other programs demonstrated, and this was actually argued as a consequence of World War I developments, is that government, if it choose, could in fact organize an economy on the basis of use values only. You don't require exchange to operate an economy. Exchange is a relatively recent development, right? And historically, uh, significantly, only within the last uh, 400 years or so. That's a short time, right? You can organize it. Now, if you do that, of course, you're outside a capitalist framework. And there's the problem, and I'm out of time. And if anybody, <laughs> if anybody wants, if any, If anybody wants a larger paper on this issue that incorporates more stuff, uh, send me an email, if you can find me.